We all remember the iconic individuals who have broken the internet. Kim Kardashian, Baby Yoda, Mr. Beast, Miley Cyrus, Left Shark, Will Smith's Inner Demons, Adele Dazim, Wreck-It Ralph, and of course, Turkish open source programmer Azer Kuchulu. Except, instead of breaking the internet through the more traditional routes of twerking on Robin Thicke, assaulting Chris Rock, or turning a fictional show about exploitative competitions into an actual show about exploitative competitions, Kuchulu decided to innovate by actually breaking the internet. As in, making it so that the internet wasn't working. In order to understand what happened, you have to understand NPM, which stands for something that my animators will have to figure out later. NPM is what's called a package manager, and basically what it does is serve as a registry for a bunch of packages of code. You see, sometimes when coders are coding things, they want their code to do a thing, but they don't want to bother with the time to code that thing themselves because they're busy commenting on this video about how I'm doing a bad job of explaining this. So to save time and effort, they'll use packages of code that other coders wrote that do the thing they want and build their projects on top of that already written code. Basically, the entire internet is built this way. Coders build their code on top of packages of code that other people wrote, which itself is built on top of packages that other people wrote, and so on and so on. It's sort of like a giant Jenga tower, each block building on the one below it, and NPM is like the database of all the blocks that are available to use. And good thing it's the basis for a ton of the internet, because Jenga towers, of course, are famously sturdy and not susceptible to catastrophically crashing. Azur Kuchulu was a 28-year-old Turkish programmer who had made a package called Kick, which did a thing that doesn't matter for this story. What does matter is that it just so happened that there was a billion dollar Canadian messaging app company also called Kick, although now they've sold their messaging app and are focused on a new product called getting sued by the SEC. Anyways, that Kick wanted to release its own open source package of code to do something that also doesn't matter for this story, but the name Kick was already taken by Azure Kuchulu's Kick package. So Kick emailed Kuchulu asking if he could change the name of his project, and it went about as well as you'd expect an interaction between an open source programmer and a billion dollar tech company would go. Kuchulu said no, Kick threatened legal action while also saying they quote, didn't want to be dicks about it. Kuchulu said the Kick people were, in fact, being dicks about it. And then the Kick people called Mom, who in this case was NPM, who ultimately stepped in, sided with the child who had corporate lawyers, and gave Kick ownership of the Kick package name. And none of this should have mattered very much at all because Kuchulu's Kick package wasn't very important and Kick's Kick package also wasn't very important. But after his package name was unceremoniously taken away, Kuchulu had a great idea. What if, to solve the problem, I got really angry and unpublished all 273 of the packages I've ever made from NPM out of spite? So on March 23rd, 2016, he did, including one called LeftPad. It was a package he'd made years ago that had a super simple function adding a space or character to the beginning of a string. It was only 11 lines of code, specifically these 11, and much like this video, it didn't require any particular skill or brilliance to write. But the moment Kuchulu unpublished LeftPad, all of a sudden, websites across the internet started failing, including big ones like Facebook, Netflix, and Spotify. Now, if you're thinking, wait a minute, on March 23rd, 2016, I was streaming season two of Daredevil on Netflix, listening to Selena Gomez's Hands to Myself on Spotify, and posting misinformation about the Zika virus on Facebook, and I never had any problems, that's because thanks to caching, most front-facing internet users, or plebs, didn't experience any disruption and had no idea there was a problem. But for programmers, it was Armageddon. Thousands of builds were failing a second. Now, it's not necessarily that Facebook and Netflix and Spotify and everyone else all used LeftPad directly in their code. It's more that they were all using big, popular NPM packages like React or Babel, and those packages used other packages, which used other packages, which, at some point down the Jenga tower, used LeftPad to add a character at the beginning of a string instead of bothering to write the 11 lines of code themselves. And now that it was gone, all the packages built atop it, even the giant ones relied on by multi-billion dollar companies, were crashing like bandicoots. The chaos got so bad that only 10 minutes later, NPM took the unprecedented step of un-unpublishing LeftPad, restoring functionality to any package that relied on it. In the end, all three of the parties responsible, Kuchulu, Kick, and NPM, put out long blog posts half apologizing but saying that ultimately they'd done nothing wrong, and the internet went on being the most powerful and transformative force of the modern era while continuing to exist only thanks to the goodwill of random, unpaid, open source programmers. So, in my opinion, dinner time is pretty much the best time of the day. It means work is over, and the only thing separating you from marathoning 90 Day Fiancé while laying comatose on the couch is dinner. So you open the fridge, and to your horror, there's nothing. You're faced with three bad choices. You either spend a bunch of time shopping for meals at the grocery store, dip into your collection of unhealthy and unappetizing freezer food, or give in and spend your life savings on delivery. 
That is unless, of course, you use HelloFresh. That's because HelloFresh is the best of all worlds. It's fast, healthy, delicious, and affordable. You select the meals you want one week, then the next a box shows up on your doorstep with everything you need to make those meals in all the exact right quantities. That means you cut out all the shopping time and most of the prep time and get straight to the part of cooking that's actually fun. Their meals are also delicious. I really love these firecracker meatballs, for example, and order them all the time. All these reasons combined explain why I've been a HelloFresh customer for two years, since long before they sponsored the channel. I find it just makes mealtime better, so I'd encourage you to give them a shot. Click the button on screen or go to HelloFresh.com and use code HI16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts.